Welcome to the show. I'm Jonathan, and today we are talking about the Van Allen belts. You know, the radiation outside of Earth that moon landing deniers and anti-NASA people always bring up in the comments. <laughs> so join me today in part one of a two-part series. Can I call it a series? Where I explain what the Van Allen belts are, why they are, and then in part two, we talk about why they didn't stop us from traveling to space in the first place, and how the Apollo mission actually did get there. Before 1958, we knew that ions and electrons could get trapped by Earth's magnetic field, but we didn't know they actually existed there. Enter James Van Allen at the University of Iowa. He and his team were the first to discover these radiation belts that we now call the Van Allen belts. It's weird. January 31st, 1958, the United States' first ever satellite, Explorer 1, was launched into the Earth's orbit, containing a tape recorder and a Geiger counter as suggested by Van Allen. The data they got back from Explorer 1 and later Explorer 3 and 4, as well as Pioneer 3, helped them detect the existence of charged particle radiation trapped by our magnetic field, most of which originate from solar winds. The radiation levels were a thousand times higher than anyone expected. They were so intense that scientists first thought that they might be from a Soviet nuclear test. And if you watched my video about sending nukes into space, you wouldn't be so surprised by this. Over the course of that year, Dr. Van Allen and his team would discover a second outer belt of radiation wrapped around the inner belt. So what does all this really mean? Well, essentially our planet is surrounded by two donuts of radiation. It looks like this. No, that looks like we have wings. Uh, we need to change our view <laughs> to this. There we go. Two donuts and a donut hole. Now looking at this, we can see that the North and South Poles appear to be free of donut. An important thing to be aware of here is that the radiation levels within these belts vary. The inner belt and outer belt are very different, but within each belt, they have a range of radiation levels. This just means that we can place things like the International Space Station and our many, many satellites within areas of these belts without fear of damage or dangerous exposure for astronauts. The inner belt of protons is fairly stable, but the outer one enlarges and shrinks. While it's less often, the inner belt can increase in size, and when it does, it can actually get a lot closer to the International Space Station and most of our satellites. But there is still 100 miles between the belt and ISS, so it's not enough to cause any harm, but also the materials we use can protect whatever precious cargo we may have inside. They are a result of our magnetic field trapping and accelerating the particles coming mostly from solar winds. But sometimes these particles can reach near the speed of light. So it's important we know this when deciding what to send into space and where to put it. The inner belt contains mostly protons and exists as a result from interactions of cosmic rays with our atmosphere, while the outer belt is mostly electrons that come from the sun and become trapped in our magnetic field called the magnetosphere. And all of this is pretty wild, but then again, space is full of strange things compared to our protected little bubble here on Earth. Well, actually, the Van Allen belts are part of that protection. Thanks to data from NASA's twin Van Allen probes that were launched in 2012, we now know that these belts are creating a nearly impenetrable barrier to high energy electrons, keeping them from hitting Earth. So the very thing that could be harmful to us and our technology is simultaneously protecting us. Within days of launching those probes, we found that the gap between these belts actually contained a temporary third belt. While it only lasted a month at that time, it would later return during major solar activity. And here are some quick details about the belts. The inner belt is 1,000 to 8,000 miles above Earth's surface. The outer belt is about 8,400 to 36,000 miles above the Earth's surface, with the highest point of radiation being between 9 to 12,000 miles up. We have over 800 satellites actively operating in the radiation belts that are used for communication and navigation, which usually sit around the 12,500 mile mark. The International Space Station sits just below the inner belt. Can other planets have Van Allen belts? Yes, but it must have a magnetic field like we do. That means that all of these planets have radiation belts, but Venus and Mars do not. If it's been a week since I released this video, then look for the link to part two of the Van Allen belts and how we are able and were able to send humans to the moon. If you want to learn about the time we sent nuclear bombs into space, then watch this video here. And as always, thanks for watching and what did you learn today? <laughs>